Yeah, that's right. Welcome in. Welcome back, everybody, to a Notre Dame blows out wake. And the fans feel conflicted about it. And it's a complicated dynamic that I understand and that we need to investigate edition of the Always Irish Show. As always, you can find that program on YouTube. Do it. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Appreciate it very much. Give the video a thumbs up. That helps old Johnny Boy out as well. Notifications on. That way you alert it every time a new episode. I just like doing that with my face. Every time a new episode drops. I know you don't want to miss it. Twitter. Search bar always Irish rat. Always Irish. Inc. Emails always Irish ND at gmail.com. Audio only anywhere you want it. You can get it to call in lines. 312 988 15. You call and tell Johnny all the things you've heard and seen. Instagram, Facebook, always Irish. Inc. USA Today fighting Irish wire. Read all about it. I think my score prediction was one score off. I was pretty close this week in the paper. Patreon.com slash Always Irish, it's your boy and a former Notre Dame captain by the name Mike Goolsby. You might have heard of him. Go check it out. Thanks to everybody who asked so far. Appreciate it very much. By the way, I want to add, now that the season's winding down with the Patreon, now's where we get it cranked up with the interviews nobody else can land. Okay, and we got one coming out this week, and then we're recording another one next week. Stay tuned for that. All right. Really good win by Notre Dame today. I get the victory chain back on. I don't have all the swag that should come with the victory chain. But we won. I got the victory chain back on. But blow out 45 to 7. Sam, you know, beat up on his old team. All that. All of that. Notre Dame did today. Exactly what you do. To a team like Wick, you did exactly what you should. And there is a lot to like and a lot of good performances and a lot of good plays and a lot of exciting things happen. And it still feels empty. And it still feels empty. And the reason it feels empty is You have three losses and you're not playing for anything anybody cares about. And everybody's disappointed that the season's over as far as national stuff. And there's a feeling of like, wow, that was awesome. But it doesn't change much. Three losses is better than four. Everybody knows that. But you would be lying to yourself not to admit it's low stakes. You're out, you're out of everything. You ain't going to the playoff. You're not in the New Year's Six. You're out of all that. And so Notre Dame fans were put in a very awkward position today. You wanted us to win. You wanted them to blow, up, blow them out. It's senior day. You want those guys to play good. You wanted Artman to do good against his old mates. All of that. You wanted younger guys to get in and make all of that we wanted. But the undercurrent of all that is frustration and disappointment because overall the year's not a success. Um, And I realize this, this may come off harsh to some people or overly critical. And you could say to me, geez, John, Notre Dame wins 45 to seven and you're still not happy. What would it take for you to be happy then? This same exact score, but you have one loss. That would make me happy. Like, you want to ask that question? How could you not be happy when you're 45-7? Do it when you have shit on the line. It just feels empty. So, it's a really rough spot to be. This all feels like it's winding down towards the end of the year. The energy and the excitement of Notre Dame, get it's winding down. That's a sign you're having a shitty year. You're in late November. You should be on the upswing. The energy should be hitting a crescendo. You should be positioning yourself for a playoff or at a minimum. 
what what prestigious New Year Six could we get in and and change the Notre Dame never wins a big bowl thing? Something had to be on the line, and you're not in line for anything but Kelly's Camping World Bowl again. So it's very very frustrating. So I'm trying to. I'm really trying to do my best to serve all of this and to be happy about the win. You only get 12 of them. You got to value them all and, and, and all that. See, here's the funny part. When I take shit for being too negative, people will say, John, you only get 12. Everyone's a big deal. That You got to be happy about this one and all that. And I'll say to you, you're right. They are all a big deal, which is why I can't forget the three you lost while I'm watching you beat up on this ragdoll high school wake team. I've had people use that argument on me on Twitter today. Like, oh, they're all a big deal. Can't you just enjoy it? Yeah, they're all a big deal. That's why you can't lose three of them. Because then you get to the end of the year and you're playing in games that don't move the national narrative. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to beat. I don't know how to say this. I want to be happy and thrilled for the guys about today, but within the framework of acknowledging overall, this year isn't accomplishing anything anybody needed it to be, and not even close to it. And it's really hard to sit in this seat and live in both of those moments at the same time. Damn glad we blew them out. It's exactly what you should do. But also, a part of you feels like it's a waste. You blew out this team, and what are you gaining out of it? Nothing. You'll be in the same bowl game. Nobody's going to care about it except the two teams in it. whoop de doo And if you don't think that, if you have a problem with me saying that, then I'm going to say to you, you need to get bigger standards for Notre Dame then. Then being thrilled out of your mind, you blew out a horrible wake team. Look at the big picture. We're nowhere close to where we need to be. I'm not trying to be overly negative, but college football has the least amount of games in its regular season compared to any major sport in America. That's why you can't have a million mental mistakes and not make any more plays and lose to Ohio State. That's why you can't afford to sleepwalk in a Super Bowl. That's why you can't afford to be dead in Death Valley and do nothing all day and get your brain stopped on and bring a dying program back to life. You can't do that shit. And then beat Wake 45-7 and want me to come in here and go, everything's fine. I'm not lying to you guys that way. You know, some of these frustrations. Let me try and explain this a little more. That trick kick. It wasn't really an onside, but to kind of squib it a little bit past 10 yards and fall on it, Notre Dame did. I love that. Everybody loves a nifty special teams play when it works. Here's my issue, though. When we did that today and got that ball, I was not happy. I was mad. You know why I was mad? Why in the hell are you waiting to do a cool, tricky special teams thing till the end of the year where you have nothing to gain out of doing it and and it's just and it's against a bad team you're already beating by a lot? It gain- That's so frustrating to me. So frustrating to me. You know when you need to steal an extra possession? Playing Ohio State. You know when you need to steal an extra possession? Louisville. Clemson. But no, we saved the coolest, trickiest thing we've done all year for a game you're blowing them out in and you're already not playing for anything. It's a waste. It's a waste of a cool play to do it when there's nothing on the line. Not even losing this game, because you weren't going to lose it anyways. But I mean nationally. Ohio State was the game you needed to steal a possession. Louisville to get back in the game. Not this. And then on top of that, you get it 
and then you get ultra conservative and then you run a third and 11 run play up the gut and you don't do anything with it either. You're killing me, Notre Dame. I just can't, I, I can't handle it. Good for Estime, big day. Uh, I saw tweets, some of the beat guys were writing, you know, apparently the staff heard everybody complaining about Estime. He's getting a lot more going today. It doesn't matter. It's too freaking late. It's too late. You aren't going to satisfy the fan base by giving them what they want in game 11 when you already have three losses. Sorry, too late. You fail. Bro. ESPN on my computer playing. I have the stats up. 277 yards for Hartman, four TDs. That's awesome, bro. Give me it against Ohio State, not Wake. Give me it against Louisville in the Super Bowl on the road. Give me it at Clemson, not Wake. All of this is a double-edged sword, you guys. I don't know how else to process this information. Everything you did good in a game like this, I'm saying too late. You needed too late. Estimate 22 carries, 115 yards. Yeah, the 22, I love it. Needed it before. Not now. Week 11's too late to figure all these epiphanies out. Son of a God, I I have the volume off on ESPN to show these stats, see these stats, and it automatically unmutes it to play their dumb commercials. Stupid ESPN. Play action. Oh, they did a lot more play action today. And you had guys open down the field and you were throwing the ball around. It's too late to start doing this shit now. I mean, it isn't too late to do it. You did it and it looked good today, but it's too late to matter in the big picture is what I mean. And I don't know what, the, what you, if anything in these games, I don't know how you could go out of this and be like, I have a better idea whether Parker should come back as the OC or not because of what we did against Wake. That's a horrible football team. To me, the measuring stick is how do you perform in your biggest games against the best opponents? Son of a gun! The measuring stick needs to be how you're doing against the best you play, not the worst. I cannot be more crystal clear to you about that. Anybody going, whatever I thought about Parker, now I'm reconsidering it because we piled it on dog shit wake. Maybe you really did figure it out. Are you out of your mind? Were you born yesterday? Was this the second football game you've ever watched? I really genuinely hope no Notre Dame fan is getting suckered into judging, letting anything that happened against this terrible. I hope. Nobody's letting anything that happened against this terrible team cloud your judgment in the big picture. When it mattered the most against the best teams with your season on the line, we have done nothing but fail. Fact. I hate it, but it's a fact. Just because you blow out this bad team doesn't mean none of that happened. Happy for Rico. Happy for Great House. Tobias got in the end zone. Eli Raritan. God, I'm so happy for that guy. I swear to God, ESPN. All right, I'm done. I'm not doing the stats. I'm done. ESPN will not let me mute their dumb thing, their commercials. Thrilled for Raritan. Glad Tobias got in the end zone. The younger guys looked, uh, Rico, great. They looked healthier and they seem to be moving a little better. All that. Like, I'm happy. I love all that. I love all that. But at the end of the day, there is no framework I could watch this game from where I don't 
at the end of it go, all of that, yeah, like it, good enough, good enough, great, you, you know, good enough. At the end of the day, overall, though, the mission was failed. This doesn't change that. I went into this saying, there's nothing Notre Dame could do in, in this game to raise my opinion of them. All it could do is go down. And I mean that. You don't get how much credit do you want for taking care of business and doing what you're supposed to do. That's the baseline. You did what you're supposed to do against a team that bad today. But there's not one bit of this where I'm like, oh man, maybe my idea on Parker's changed because they, sh they beat up on horrible Wake. No, wake up and look at the big picture. Where was all these points against Ohio State? Where was this offense that was doing stuff against Louisville in the Super Bowl that they were in and you didn't have any interest in participating in? How about Death Valley with your old season on the line? One thing leads to another. College football is the one sport where everything else you did matters more in the current moment than any other sport. That's why those three losses were killers. A couple of these commenters have said to me, John, it feels like you've lost a little bit of your fire and intensity here as now that we're into this week and the rest of the season. What's going on? Don't blame me. Blame Notre Dame. The Iowa State was a program-defining moment. You let slip away. You didn't show up and you gave Louisville their Super Bowl whole thing. And then you got punked and revitalized the entire Dabo Clemson thing, bro. What You leave me nothing to work with. You leave me nothing to work with. Now, you did get that big USC win that Freeman had to have. And I still think it was the most important one you had to have. But the more we're seeing of USC, the more you're seeing just how bad they are. And it was a bigger win in the moment than it is now because they're falling apart and you're getting less credit the more they fall apart. But against anybody good, you didn't do anything all year. So I'm sorry, man. It's just that's not good enough. And we find ourselves in a frustrating situation. Um. So yeah, I liked a lot of what we did today. It's just frustrating because what's it building towards? The Camping World Bowl? I'm not interested. I'm just not interested in that. This all has to be better than this. You got a six-year quarterback to, to make higher than the Camping World Bowl. Play Steve for half, play Minchie for half in the bowl game. Oh, John, you can't do that. Why? You're not in a, you're not even in one of the big, the new year six to where if you win it, you'll be able to get rid of the meme and the running joke that we never win a big bowl game. You're not even in a big one. Even if you lose it, it doesn't matter on that record because you didn't even make it to one. So how much am I going to worry about that? This, these are the problems that happen when you're out of contention and you have a bunch of lame duck games to play. And when I say lame duck, I just mean nationally speaking. I know the importance of winning every game as much as you can. I'm talking about national shit. The only reason I'm interested in any of this is the reason Lou was. Getting respect. Respect around the country. That is my goal for Notre Dame football. Getting respect around the country. Nothing you could do the rest of this year has the ability to do that. That means you fail. Means you fail. If you're not getting national respect for being really good, you're not doing anything. That's what this is all about. And no matter, it doesn't matter if you beat Stanford 100 to nothing and you beat uh, the Camping Bowl, uh, whatever, 100 to nothing. It doesn't change anything. Notre Dame had multiple moments to change the narrative this year, and they shit themselves every time. I am not okay with that. That's on the players. 
That's on the coaches. That's on everybody. Not good enough. Not what you brought in this quarterback to get. So I don't know, guys. I'm not trying to be overly negative. But I totally refuse to let my brain get skewed by stuff that looks good against one of the worst teams we played all year. At home. No. So, happy for the seniors. Happy for the win. Happy for all the guys that played good. Uh, Tobias, especially happy to see him get in the end zone. Raritan, I'm so, it's so good to see that guy out there running around. I love all that. The young receivers had a good day. Uh, Rico, great. They did look healthy. I love all that. I love all of it. But that does not change. That overall, you are nowhere close. Nowhere close to where this needs to be and get real quick. Let me know what you guys think.